Before the French and Indian War, the Wabanaki Conference was formed as an alliance of Algonquin language people in response to Iroquois aggression. According to Wabanaki.com, it consisted of Abenaki, Penobscot, Micmac, Maliset, and Pussimacoati tribes. According to the National Museum of the American Indian, famous leaders of the Wabanaki Con Confederacy included Michael Napton from 1689, Peter Paul Neptune from 1725, and Francis Scott Neptune from 1833. A famous hero was Kaluskop, which has many different spellings because of a lack of a formal written language. He was a benevolent demigod hero who taught the Algonquin people the art of civilization and protected them from danger. He's famous for not ever committing crime or chasing women. In fact, he was a bachelor for most of the stories. Information gathered from the Canadian Department of Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development gives evidence towards the Wabanaki's usage of powwows, a gathering of North American tribal people featuring traditional dancers and drummers. This is a friendly competition between groups and also used for serious events and decision-making ceremonies. The Wabanaki as a people don't look down on women until this idea was introduced by white assimilation. The Wabanaki culture is heavily reliant on oral traditions and oral history is the only way to pass down traditions to new generations.
gets a little player we're at the end of our intertribal and we have some specials to take care of. Oh, three more intertribal, white wolf, whenever you're ready. Oh, there we go. Criminal law acted to non-tribal members is automatically a crime underneath Canadian law and legal jurisdiction, but internal crimes between tribal members can be taken to the power of the tribal court if both members please, but if the Canadian government wishes, it can be taken underneath Canadian jurisdiction. According to Article 8, Section 1 of the Possumquare of Constitution, there is exclusive dur jurisdiction over all dispute, civil disputes within the internal tribal members. This means that these matters are exclusive and not to be tried by other governments, such as the Canadian government. These include the rights of membership, descent, position of land within the Pusumquare territory, and tribal government. Criminal law it can be taken to tribal court, but it's also automatically underneath Canadian jurisdiction. Internal crimes can be taken to the power of tribal court as well, but that also can be taken to Canadian jurisdiction. Family law in the Wabanaki Conference consisted of not harming children or women. With regard to business, there were no laws provided for businesses because there was no true attempt to gain wealth in the tribe as it was a codependent community. If one of the tribes is going bankrupt, then it is the duty of the Confederacy to provide uh, assistance for it. According to Wabanaki.com, certain issues currently within the tribe are maintaining the tribal traditions while also being able to provide education and modern benefits to the children, having them carry both word, worlds of being Canadian and being Wabanaki. Um, what's really interesting about the Wabanaki and Confederacy is that they're a semi-sovereign nation or a first nation within the boundaries and jurisdiction of another nation state, either Canada or the U.S. in Maine. And according to the rules of the tribal court, by the Honorable Chief Judge of the Mi'kmaq Chief, Gary Gow, the plaintiff themselves has to be within court to speak about their civil issues, which causes issues with um, eyewitnesses as the only evidence that is coming is two people's word, the plaintiff and the defendant. And this is actually similar to Roman and Greek law and Roman and Greek lawyers, where there are issues with eyewitnesses and with proper representation. Another problem facing Native Americans in southern Canada and in the northern U.S. today is the expansion of the Keystone XL pipeline, which would potentially pollute salmon waters, which are sacred to the people, and provide a food source, as well as break contracts that the nations have held with the Canadian government and international companies, which are stating that um, only five ships can pass through certain sounds through a day and change that to up to 34 ships a day. Um, this breaking of treaty and of contracts is a common theme within the treatment of Native Americans in these countries and is something which really upsets the people. In this video you can see people in this video you see people's working to protest that in Washington DC. So let's hear what they have to say. Yet been born. We want you to be good ancestors of the understand that we're saying no. But this time enough is enough. So we do this for our grandchildren. When we offer this water, we're going to pray for all of your grandchildren. Someone at Sichampu said this isn't an Indian thing. We all drink water. So we're offering this for your grandchildren with prayers and the strongest of prayers possible because we know that our waterways are polluted. This wasn't testing.